Hey everyone, this is Allie and welcome to The Common Room. Today on my channel we are going to be unboxing all six of the Deluxe Illustrated Edition Harry Potter books that are currently available through Bloomsbury Publishing. The first books that I'm going to be showing you are the first four from the Harry Potter series that have been illustrated by the amazing Jim Kay. The last two books that I will be showing you come from the Hogwarts Library. We have The Tales of Beetle the Bard, which is illustrated by Chris Riddell. And then we also have Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which is illustrated by Olivia Lamanek Gill. I've been waiting for all of these to come in so I could do one video, so I'm very excited. So this is the first of the four books that we are unboxing that are illustrated by Jim Kay. These are the, again, the first four from the Harry Potter series. Now these, although we have taken these out of the box, they were shipped in. Each book is in a plastic cover, so you'll see that I have not opened these yet. I wanted to open these with you guys. So let's go ahead and start. One thing that I'm instantly a fan about is my favorite color is purple. And this book is a beautiful, rich purple. And you can see the snitch has like gold foiling on it. Let me go ahead and take this plastic off so we can really see it. Oh, this is beautiful. It has the gold foiling is so vibrant and bright on here. And it's got, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but I'm not sure if it's just from the gold foiling, but it almost looks like it has a little bit of glitter kind of sparingly brushed across it with these books this is the just the outer case it's like a sleeve that's holding the actual book in and it's made out of a material like a cloth material so i'm gonna go ahead and grab the actual book out of here um one thing on these again it's a lot like the box that it came in you see the snitch on the front it also has Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone on the Spine by J.K. Rowling and illustrated by Jim Kay. One thing I'm very excited about on here is that since I'm from the U.S., I don't have any actual copies of the book that are Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I just have Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. So this is my first Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, which is super exciting. And then again, on the back of it is just another gold foil, golden snitch. And then here you can see the actual book is inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that out of the sleeve. These books are very big and very heavy, so be careful with them. Alrighty, so on here you can see that there is a gold foiling kind of scene that starts on the front and it wraps all around the back of Diagon Alley. And then the book has the gold pages as well. The gold foiling on this book is just stunning. It's like covering the whole book, so that's amazing. Since these books are really heavy, I'm gonna go ahead and set it down and flip through it that way. That way we can see the illustrations together. Okay, let's get our first look into Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I opened up here to our page of chapters, which has a lot of different flying keys. Harry at the zoo. We've got Vernon paddling them across the lake where they are trying to hide out. Oh, and Hagrid and his umbrella giving Dudley a pig's tail. Oh, and there's their little hideout. We've got Diagon Alley and the scene where Harry first meets Draco when he's getting fitted for his robes. Oh, we've got a nice little page with Dumbledore and his lemon sherbet. Ooh, we've got a little bit of a dark looking Hogwarts there. And the school ghosts. I like how he did that. Ooh, look at how he portrayed or how he illustrated the sorting hat. That's really cool. It has like these different patches of fabric. Ooh, 
This is, I'm guessing this is Hagrid's hut. I like that, he's got his pumpkins in his garden. And when Malfoy steals the Remembral, you can see him holding it up there. Oh, look, it's Newt Scamander's Guide to Trolls. That's really cool. Oh, we've got them at the Quidditch game in all their Gryffindor colors. Oh. This is Harry looking into the mirror, mirror of Erised. Oh. You can see, you can't see his parents in there, but you know from reading it that that's what he sees. Oh, look at Dumbledore in his jeans. <laughs> Oh, I like that. Oh, we've got another Professor Page. This one is from McGonagall. She's got a little frog on her. I like this. I like the purples in the dark here. And this beautiful unicorn standing out. Oh, we've got Fluffy. Just all his little noses. I like that. I like that you can tell how big he is just because just this little section of him takes up the whole page. And this is their chess game. Oh, that's really cool. You can see Quirrell taking his turban off and Voldemort's red eye looking at him out the back. And then at the end here, we have Diagon Alley North Side print. Now this is a really long print, so let me just kind of move it over so you can see the whole thing. You can see Diagon Alley. And then we've got all the shops here. and blots. You can see Madame Malkin's rope shop is kind of cut off here. So that's beautiful. And that is our flip through of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. So now I have our second book that we are going to be opening. Um, this one is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, again illustrated by Jim Kay. This one you can see spiders on the front, and there are more spiders on the back of this box. So of course on this one we have just the one Acromantula spider, which I believe is probably meant to be Aragon on the cover. Let me go ahead and again take this plastic off so we can really see this book. One thing about these books, just from opening two so far, is the colors on here are so vibrant. Like when these are on my bookshelf, they're going to be standout books because the colors just pop out at you. So this one, again, the sleeve is made out of the cloth material. It's got our Acromantula on the front, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets with J.K. Rowling and illustrated by Jim Kay on the spine. And then another spider on the back. So I'm going to go ahead and take the book out of this sleeve also. So donning the cover on this book, you can see what looks like, it looks like to be the Herbology Greenhouses, um, of course, where they have the mandrakes. This also is etched with a lot of beautiful gold foiling, which again, to me, I can see is kind of glittered out among the cloth material. We move it and we have the same spine and more of the greenhouse on the back. And these also have the gold pages. And this one I can see something kind of sneaking out the back here. I'm gonna go ahead and tuck that in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and set this one down so we can flip through it. Okay, so now we are going to take a look into Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. 
This one, the page of chapters, opens up with a bunch of spiders on it. And these spiders each have little skulls on their back. Ooh, there are some eyes. I wonder if those are Dobby's eyes? Oh, look at Dobby's little butt. And what are these little guys? Oh, the, we're in the burrow, so these must be the gnomes that they denome at the burrow. That's really cool. Those are a lot different than I had them pictured. Oh, I like that shot of the burrow. Yeah, you can see the little gnomes on the fins. Oh, we've got Hagrid in Nocturne Alley. Oh, and I'm wondering if this is Nocturne Alley. You can see it getting a little, it looks like the Diagon Alley shops, but they get a little darker. You can see the Ford Anglia flying over there. Oh, we've got another one. This kind of reminds me of the troll page that we saw. This one's the Mandrake. We've got Ron with his slugs. You can see he, Jim K did this in the last one too. It looks like when he has the ghosts, he keeps the pages dark and illuminates them with color. I like that. Oh, we've got Moaning Myrtle. Oh, and this we have a professor page for Gilderoy Lockhart. Looks like he's signing some autographs. I really like this one. This is Harry playing Quidditch. You can see Malfoy in the back here. You can see the snitch up here. We've got a nice dark little page for Skelligro. This is Hogwarts. It looks like it's, you can tell it's winter time. They have snowmen, but this looks a little dark. Got a little page just for Draco Malfoy. Oh, Hermione is the cat. Oh, I like this picture is much scarier than they make her out in the movie. I like that. Now this is gorgeous. Look at all these colors. I think this is this has to be Harry coming out of Tom Riddle's diary or going into his diary. Let me see. Yeah, this chapter is the very secret diary. I love how he did that, how he illustrated him going in or coming out. That's gorgeous. Oh, we've got a Rubius Hagrid page. We've got Aragog and Fang. Oh, and you can see all his children behind them. Oh, there's a nice picture of Harry with Gryffindor's sword and the basilisk. I like how this is a very dark picture. Oh, and you can see that Fang, or that Fang, you can see the fox just clawed the basilisk eyes out. But you can also see this one very bright red feather over here from Fox. That one's also very beautiful. Oh, and then we have a little Phoenix tribute page. Oh, that's really cool. Shows you the difference between the male and the female. And then we have a nice illustration of the Sword of Gryffindor. This one also says Diagon Alley North Side. Is this the same print as the last one? No, this looks different than the last one. Let's see. So we'll start off here. I like how their dentist is a mouth magician. <laughs> yeah, so that one it does say north side, but that is different than the print from the Philosopher's Stone. Alright, and that is everything 
from the Chamber of Secrets. So we have our next book here. So the front of this one just has the two stacks and in the back has one of these stacks. So on this one again, the print on the box is just a little different than on the actual cover. Instead of the small stacks, we have one large stag in the middle. And I'm, again, I'm gonna go ahead and take this plastic off. Opening this one up, um, the color on this one's actually a little bit different than I had thought it would be. Just from seeing pictures of this online, it almost looked like a teal color. But in person, this is a very vibrant, bright blue. So we've got our stag and gold foiling on the front. We have our, we have our spine with Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. And then we have the stag again on the back. So let me take this book out. On this one, when you pull up the actual book, there is an illustration in gold foiling on here. Um, now on here, there's like some students or there's someone in here with like a little wizard hat on. I'm not exactly sure what this illustration is. If anybody knows, please comment below. I would love to know what it is of. It's still, it's very beautiful. Again, this one with the spine, but it wraps all the way around the back with that illustration. This one also has the gold pages. So let's go ahead and flip through this one as well. So let's flip through the Prisoner of Azkaban. I like how you open up straight to Azkaban. Our pages of chapters are a little different. Looks like we have some Azkaban cells over here and just this gray sky here. Oh, we've got Aunt Marge ballooning up and coming out of her shoes. Ooh, she looks absolutely terrifying in that picture. <laughs> oh, I like this, you can see just the traffic, but then you've got your night bus over here. Oh, you've got Crookshanks and Scabbers. We have when the Boggart turns into the mummy. We've got a nice big picture of Crookshanks and Scabbers. We have Fred and George hiding behind the statue. Is that the, is that the one eyed witch statue? I love anything, again, Christmas related with Harry Potter. You can see there's a tree with ornaments. Looks like they are in the three broomsticks. They're in the snow. I wonder if that's the Shrieking Shack. You can see the Dementor. We've got a Quidditch match. I see blue and red, so this much must be Ravenclaw. Yeah, Gryffindor versus Ravenclaw. So this is, I'm assuming, Sirius's Animagus form. I like how he made him look kind of dark like this because in the book, Harry's scared of him when he first sees him. Associates him with the Grim. Oh, he's got kind of multiple pages for him. Got Professor Trelawney. This one, you can hardly tell, but there's just a lot of little stags in the background here. Oh, I like this picture of the Whomping Willow. Got Snape. Ooh, Peter Pettigrew. Looking like a little rat. 
Oh, I love that too. So we've got Harry and his Patronus. But I love how it shows it coming out of his wand. So magical. And I like again how it's the forbidden forest and it's so dark and scary, but then he's got this beautiful, brightly colored Patronus. There's more. You can see the Dementors at the top here. Oh, and you've got Hermione and Harry on Buckbeak. That's a really good one. Oh, this must be Lupin right before he's leaving Hogwarts. Now this is, this is the print from the front. We didn't know what this was. I'm still not sure what it is, but it looks like it's something to do with Hogwarts. You can see the little students up here in a peacock. So this one, let's look. Oh, I like the Dementors in the back here. Let's see what this print is. Oh, I'm already excited. So this one looks like it's, oh, how cool, okay. <laughs> so this one, you can see the werewolf and shows you like different parts of the werewolf. But then when you open them up, it's like it has this, the skeleton of it and it gives you even more so it gives you more information over here on the anatomy of the werewolf. And then if you open this up, you're gonna get more of the skeletal aspect. And then the skull. That's really cool. I like how it's kind of the outside and the inside. And property of Hogwarts Library. That was probably Hermione doing her werewolf research. So this is our last book that we will be unboxing that is illustrated by Jim Kay. This is, of course, the fourth book, which is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. You can see on here that there is a dragon. I believe this is the Hungarian horn-tailed dragon on here. And then we've got Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and our dragon again. This one goes back to kind of the same as the first book, The Philosopher's Stone, where the print on the box does match what is on the book. So let me take the plastic off this one for you. So now you can see this one is a very vibrant dark green. This one again has the dragon on the front. See our spine for Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling, illustrated by Jim Kay and then our dragon on the back. So taking the book out of the sleeve, you can see that this one also has the prints or illustrations on the front. This one I was thinking may be a tint from the Quidditch World Cup. I'm not sure if you can see this, but it kind of has like the rope or strands that come down from a tent that go into the ground to keep it up. Again, on this front piece, if you know what that is, just comment and let me know. I would love to know for sure. We have Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling, illustrated by Jim Kay. Now the back illustration is different on this one. This illustration I think could be a stand from the Quidditch World Cup. You can see that there is a wizard in the stand and there are um, hats that are hanging down that have the shamrock. This one also has the gold pages. And one thing I didn't mention with all of the other ones, but you can tell that they all have a like a ribbon bookmark in there. Let me go ahead and set this one down so we can flip through. Okay, so now we are gonna take a look into Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Looks like this one started with something at the front instead of in the back. Oh, I almost don't wanna open it. Yeah, I don't think, looking at the back of it, like through the light, it looks like it's just this one print. I'm not gonna open this because it has a sticker on here, but you can see that it is a print, a preliminary pencil sketch of Hogwarts, the school of witchcraft and wizardry. That's really pretty. So 
So on here, our chapters just have patterns on them. I'm sure they are centered around the Quidditch World Cup. Ooh, the Riddle House looks so dark and scary. I love that. It's like a... Oh, I'm guessing this is when he's dreaming of maybe being a snake or dreaming of seeing Nagini. But I love this dark picture of him and all you can really make out is his scar. You can tell that's the kitchen in the burrow. Miss Weasley. Ooh. This is all the different tints from the Quidditch World Cup. Oh, one of my favorite things that I always kind of missed from the books into the movies is you can see just the crazy outfits that they're wearing because they were trying, they don't know muggle fashion. <laughs> So here we've got the dark mark that they sent up at the Quidditch World Cup. I like how magical that looks. You can see all the specks of the green and you can see the snake coming out of its mouth. We've got the Hogwarts Express. Oh look, it's Mad-Eye. But it's not just Mad-Eye, it's him turning Malfoy into a ferret. Again, I like how this is all very muted and with grays and greens and blacks, but you can see the wand from, or the magic from his wand is brightly colored and also his eye. So that, I'm assuming, is Cedric. I don't know who that's supposed to be. Oh, how cool. You can see the dragons, and it's nighttime, and they're chained up. So I'm sure this is from when Hagrid takes Harry out to the forest to warn him of the first task. Oh, and here we have the dragon print and giving you kind of information on the Swedish snort the Swedish short snout oh, we've got another beautiful Gryffindor themed picture um, it would look like he was playing Quidditch but this is when he is trying to retrieve the golden egg blast in its screws <laughs> This one's kind of cool. I've noticed on the chapters that each new chapter is bordered. Oh, this is from the second task. You can see this is Crumb because he turned his head into a shark head so he could breathe under the water. The pensive. I guess this is Harry. Looking into the pensive. You can see the port key at the end of the maze. And then Cedric going to get it together. Oh. And then you can tell by the by the rush of or by the brightness in the green that this is. Cedric getting the killing curse. Oh, I'm assuming that is that supposed to be Voldemort before he took his complete form and his red eyes and his slit on his nose. Oh, I like this. So these are pages apart, I believe, but you can see this is Voldemort with the Killing Curse, but then this is Harry with his Expelliarmus, the two spells meeting. Oh, 
look at this. This is how I imagine the spells looking coming out of the wands. Rita Skeeter in her animagus form. And then we've got the giant squid. I didn't even notice that at the front because I was looking at that print. That is all of the Goblet of Fire. So now that we have looked through all four of the Jim K. Illustrated Harry Potter books, I am going to be opening the two books that we have from the Hogwarts Library. This first one that we have is the Tales of Beetle the Bard. This one is illustrated by Chris Riddell. So this is the front, and then we have this illustration on the back. So let's go ahead and open this up to see how the box differs from the actual book. So we can see on this one that the print on the box is completely different from what we have on the cover or the sleeve itself. We have the spine. And in the back, it's the rest of the print from the front. You can see it's kind of got the rest of her dress and his cloak just sprawling out onto the back. But let me take the plastic off of this. Here it is without the plastic, so you guys can get a little bit better of a view. This one doesn't have as much gold foiling as the Jim K Illustrated Editions, but I don't know if you can see, if you look in here, there are still little specks of gold. We've got them in her hair and on her dress. So it still gives that little pop. Let me take out the book. This one's kind of a big difference when you're pulling it out of the sleeve because you go from this red, kind of dark, red and black scene to this bright, pretty greens and blues in nature. So you can see this print on the front here. We've got the spine. And then we've got the rest of the illustration on the back. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what's in store for us. Okay, so now we are going to go through the Tales of Beetle the Bard. This one also has the print at the beginning. Now again, I'm not gonna open these because they do have a sticker on them, but you can see that this is a portrait of Headmaster Albus Dumbledore. Yeah, and it's just the one print. So this, we have the wizard and the hopping pot. This is a page that says Albus Dumbledore on the Wizard in the Hopping Pot. Oh, I like this. Looks like there's some fairies here. Now these are the lovely ladies from the front of the box. Now I remember the headmaster Armando Dippet, or Armando Dippet. Is that Baltimore? And this is from the cover of the book. You can see, this makes it look even more scary. There's like a heart, this has like the, I don't even know. I feel like this is something Luna Lovegood would have talked about to us. <laughs> The Harry Heart, a guide to wizards who won't commit. I guess the Harry Heart is what he had pulled out in that picture from the cover. Remember Ron talking about this? Babbity Rabbity and her cackling stump? Look at this little guy with a wand in his mouth. Oh, we've got Professor McGonagall. I'm assuming this is her in her animagus form because it has kind of the ring around the eye for the glasses, plus her wand. A very different view of the bow truckle. Now this I can see is about the Deathly Hallows, the tale of the three brothers. Look, there's death 
and the three brothers. You can see him getting stabbed for his elder wand, bringing back his love. And then he is an old man because he hid from death with his invisibility cloak. I like that. And there's Albus Dumbledore on the tail of the three brothers. I like this. It has the different kinds of wood for your wand. I'm trying to see if I see mine here. Oh, of course not. My wand would be made out of hawthorn. And then we have the peverils. Oh, very cool. So that one is all of the tales of Beetle the Bard. And finally, we have our last book. This is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which has been illustrated by Olivia Lominick Gill. You can see there is a Pegasus on the front of this box. We have our spine. And then again, we have another Pegasus on the back. I'm not going to lie, I'm in love with the illustration on this one. It's very celestial. You can see the centaur. Let me go ahead and take the plastic off so we can really see. This one also doesn't have um, the amount of gold foiling as the first four, but this one is kind of the same. If you look at it, you can see there are little specks of gold. This one almost like it's representing the stars. You can see it on the back here too. There's just all kinds of tiny little gold foiled specks on here. Really just beautiful. So here we have the front with our centaur. We have our spine. And then the back here. Let me take this book out for you. So this art is definitely very my style. I think this is just absolutely beautiful. On the front here you can see what looks like a dragon and its body is kind of meant to look like it goes into a mountain. And let me turn it. Here you see the spine but then you can see where the dragon's body comes down on the other side of the print. That's just so pretty. Yeah, let me definitely go ahead and open this one up so we can see what else we have inside. Okay, so our last book, we are going to take a look into Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. I've been on a big Fantastic Beasts kick lately, watching or re-watching the movies, and this illustration makes me even more excited. So on here, again, we have a print that I am not going to open, but you can see this is a phoenix print. Open right up to, let me see, do our chapter page here, if they have one. Oh, this one doesn't really have one. So we'll go to the Acromantula, which we know Aragog, the Acromantula. Oh, we've got a basilisk here. Oh, my favorite, the centaur. I'm still in love with this illustration. Oh, we've got the Demi guys, also one of my favorites. He has imagined the Demi guys a little different than we see in the movies. Oh, and here is the dragon from the cover, the Hebridean Black. Oh, we've got another dragon, the Peruvian Viper Tooth. And here we can see one from the Triwizard Tournament, the Swedish Short Snout. Okay, these open up, so let's see what they open up to. Oh, we've got, oh, we've got the U. Well, let me move this so you can see it. It opens up to the Ukrainian Iron Belly. A hide behind. And we love the hippogriff. I like seeing the baby hippogriff. Yep. Oops. 
I like how this one, this one has a lot of illustrations, basically a illustration for each magical creature. The Measle, which we know from Luna, and a Leprechaun. Got the Manticore. The moon calf. And the Akami. I'm opening just up to a lot of the ones from the actual movie. Oh, we've got our Phoenix. A Remora. The Rune Spore. Oh, a Snallygaster. He's kind of terrifying. Ooh, the Sphinx. I love this watercolor type of art. And we've got the unicorn, which my wand has a unicorn hair in its core. Just the winged horse, which I believe I called the Pegasus. But this is what is on the this is what is on the box. Oh, we have the Yeti. I like how the Yeti, everything is like the whites and the blues of the snow, but then it has all this color here. All right, and that is the end of Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. I hope you enjoyed unboxing these illustrated editions with me today. I do hope to add more of these deluxe illustrated editions to my collection once they become available. I do know that on the Bloomsbury Publishing website right now, you can pre-order Quidditch through the ages. I myself am in the U.S., so anyone located in the U.S., we are not able to pre-order them off of their website. Once they are released, though, I will be looking into adding that to my collection. I know that Jim Kay is currently working on Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. That book is really a turning point in the Harry Potter series, going into a more of a darker direction, which Jim Kay has expressed is more of his style. So I'm definitely excited to see how he is going to bring that to life. Currently, we do not know when Order of the Phoenix will be available for us to purchase. I have read where it could be available in the fall of 2021, but it could be after that. With the quality of Jim Kay's illustrations though, I'm sure it will be worth the wait. As always, thank you for watching. If you would like to see more videos related to my Harry Potter collection and the wizarding world, feel free to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you next time in the common room.